Battlefield 5's 4.4 patch is here, and it's not a complete disaster. I mean, there's a semi-serious ping problem with people getting bad server hops and playing at 20 plus or higher pings than usual. I'm sure it will be fixed soon. And looting items in Firestorm have gone back to piling up on top of themselves, making it impossible to loot items with any sort of speed or accuracy. But who cares about Firestorm anyway? The cheaters have kind of taken over that game mode. So aside from those two glaring issues <clears throat> so far, the rest of the patch seems fairly acceptable. Which for DICE these days anyway is like hitting a freaking Grand Slam. We now have a rank increase to 500, and each time you rank up, you get company coin. Now I can finally differentiate myself from all the other peasants who play this game with my awesome new rank symbol that I don't exactly know how to properly read yet. Sure, easier to read colored emblems might have been nice, or cosmetic unlocks tied into rank progression rather than just rank symbols could have been cool, but hey, it's functional. We certainly don't want to push DICE too far by asking them to implement well thought out interesting features that will keep their player base engaged for months to come. Sorry for the heavy sarcasm guys, it's just how I feel right now. I'm not exactly in the mood to celebrate a non-failure, which is what DICE's 4.4 patch is. Some bug fixes, a smidge of content, and a few tiny new features. Let's talk about the two new maps, and I say quote unquote new maps because, well, they only support Squad Conquest and Team Deathmatch, which means aside from this review video, I'll probably never play them again unless there's an upcoming assignment for those game modes, which hopefully is coming on Thursday. I mean, if you like Squad Conquest and TDM, then that's fine. I used to enjoy TDM a lot in Battlefield 3, but for anyone who just plays Conquest or Breakthrough, well, these maps are not available in those modes. Also, there's no playlist for the new maps, so have fun queuing up with an 11 map cycle waiting on this new content to pop up briefly and then going back to the other standard maps in the cycle. Apparently, DICE announced that they will be launching a dedicated playlist for these maps, but it's coming next week as opposed to this week. DICE, come on. You did Merida well with a dedicated playlist for Merida only when the map launched. Why can't we just follow up with these maps the same way? It doesn't make sense that it's coming a week later. Now the maps Lofoten Islands and Provence are actually pretty looking maps. I think I like Lofoten the best, the visibility is good, and the aesthetics, although completely copied over from Firestorm, are still nice to look at. The maps, however, are very bite-sized and most of the interesting parts of them are actually the surrounding environments. I couldn't help but notice that the end of round screen on Provence looked like an awesome area that would have made for an epic assault into a city in perhaps the breakthrough game mode, but I guess we don't get to experience that. I'd like to say more about the maps, but really they just feel like samples of a bigger concept. If you're a hardcore TDM or Squad Conquest fiend, you got two more decent maps to cycle through, but for me, it's quite literally non-content. Now, what about the rest of the patch? As there was quite a few different balance changes and little things added here and there. There's a few nice little visual enhancements like new pilot and tanker uniforms, finally. Now it's much easier to tell if somebody has bailed out of a pilot seat, which is a nice bit of necessary detail and something that Battlefield fans are used to from previous games. Medic crates and ammo crates now have a new animation when you take ammo or health out of them. It's just cosmetic, but it does enhance the look and better conveys the refresh mechanic associated with those crates. The Universal Carrier now has a passenger side mounted Bren gun that's actually got some decent cover and is kind of fun to use. When customizing your soldier in the armory, you may notice that uniforms are now linked to the characters instead of the classes, which is actually kind of nice and helps to sort of organize things a bit better. You may also have some duplicates when you first get into the armory, but once you update it, the newer system does feel significantly better than before. There's been some weapon balance changes. Medium machine guns now have a much higher first shot recoil. This is an important change because it means that it may take players just a little bit more time before they can dial in their bipodded bullet hoses, which potentially gives the person on the receiving end enough time to maybe duck for cover or return fire. Apparently more MMG balances are coming in the 4.6 patch. 
Many bolt-action rifles have had their minimum damage increased. The Enfield, the M95, the Car 98, and the Krag Jorgensen have all seen buffs in this regard, with the Krag and Enfield getting max damage boosts as well. This is overall a good and needed buff in my opinion. Hopefully it'll help combat players being able to outheal the two-shot kill at range by popping a med pack between the first and second shot. Most of the SMGs have seen significant performance buffs as well to their recoil control, and a few of them have had their specialization trees changed to offer more meaningful trade-offs. The Tommy Gun, Suomi, and MP34 have had their specialization trees changed and may need to be re-specialized before you take them out into combat. This is generally great news for the medics and should offer them more precision, allowing them to uh, damage their enemies with better aimed shots. So increasing the skill ceiling for the medic class. A few other game tweaks have been made, one which allows players to throw back their own grenades. So if you have a poorly thrown grenade that lands at your feet, you have a second chance to get it away from you. There's an improved grenade explosion effect. AP mines now make louder sounds when you trigger them and no longer despawn after the owner dies. However, I still think they need to be tweaked a bit and dice as they might be looking into the mechanics further in future patches. AT mines now deal damage more consistently. Parachutes should now be able to open sooner when falling, allowing for many players to save themselves from lethal fall damage. You can also glide better from parachutes and reduce fall damage so that you need to fall from an increased height in order to die. The ADS animation bug that occurred after resupplying our healing is now fixed. This was introduced with the last patch and is now fixed in this patch. Players who completed the campaign objectives to get some of the custom cosmetic items like the Last Tiger tank skin, many of them had those assignments bugged. And if you were one of those players with a bugged assignment, that should now be fixed and the cosmetic item should be unlocked for you. The AT grenade pistol should now deal appropriate damage to buildings, which is good if you ever struggle trying to take down walls with that thing. The S2-200 assignment should now track correctly, though there's no mention of the many other improperly worded assignments getting fixed. You'll have to check those ones manually. The comma row should now detect mass input better, making it a more reliable tool. They also allegedly fixed a bunch of hitbox desync issues, which will have to be tested more extensively. These are related to players in vehicles or gunner seats or vaulting over walls. Speaking of further testing, the stuttering issue that many players have suffered from is one of the items that DICE has potentially made big improvements to. Normally, I play Battlefield 5 with a tool called Intelligent Standby List Cleaner to help reduce the massive amounts of stutters that I get in this game. It's not a foolproof fix, as there has been many stutters regardless, but it has reduced them. For the four hours that I played yesterday, I had better results than before. For a while, I played without using the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner tool enabled to see if the game ran properly. And although it appeared to run better, there were still a decent amount of micro hiccups, especially when Battlefield 5 ate up all my standby memory. After enabling Intelligent Standby List Cleaner, the game appeared to run very smoothly, which before would only fix a bunch of the stuttering and not all of it. However, the issue needs to be tested further. I've had good days of Battlefield 5 prior to this patch with minimal stuttering, and then I've had bad days with massive stutters every 60 seconds or more. So, it's possible yesterday was just a good day and that the issue could crop up again. But for me personally, so far with the limited testing, it appears to be better, but I do still need to use a third party tool to get my performance up to where I would expect it to be. And just as a note to anyone who's gonna try and help me troubleshoot this problem in the YouTube comments, please don't. I promise you I've tried all of the basic stuff that you're gonna suggest, like switching to DirectX 12, updating my graphics drivers, doing a memory check to see if my RAM has any problems with it. Trust me, it's not a PC issue, it's a Battlefield 5 issue. Now, as for the remaining content for Chapter 4, the new weapons, which were allegedly contained in this patch, should be dropping with the Tides of War content updates, uh, hopefully later this week, and I'll be covering those when they release. 
Anyway, that's it for the 4.4 patch. Temporal has mentioned that the new data mine info that he got in this patch shows some of the new Pacific guns and that they look very promising. DICE has mentioned that the 4.6 patch could make some very nice improvements to MMG meta. I'll keep you all posted on the ping fix issue since that's probably the biggest screw up of the patch and may be affecting some people way worse than others. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.